Hi, good evening. I'm Dr. Philip McMillan. And today I'm talking about the fact that a lot of people are confused about what's happening with COVID. And this is even within the scientific and medical community. Many people are saying, well, COVID is mild. It doesn't matter that it's circulating. What I'm telling you now is that COVID is different. It's not the same disease. And I'll be bringing into play a new acronym as to what I think is going to be happening next. If you don't understand the mechanism as to what caused severe disease in the first place, you will not know what it looks like in this phase. So part of what I'm preparing is that I'll be putting together this concept of storm, spike triggered autoimmune response mechanism. This is very important because without a grasp of what this is, you can't see and understand what is going to happen next. So the first thing that I want you to do, I'll be explaining this in much more detail when I do this webinar. Join me, the link is there. There are some free tickets, limited. Your support is always appreciated. It's in about two weeks time on a Thursday, around this time, 7 p.m. UK, join me as I try and put together this very important concept of STORM. This is the acronym in my mind, and I'll try and make it clear as to what really is going on. But people still don't get, why is it that I'm saying that COVID is going to be different? It's a respiratory disease, so it must present in that way. Well, actually, when you understand what really caused severe COVID-19, you will understand why it cannot scientifically present in the same way. This is what is critical about severe COVID-19. When we looked at even SARS-CoV, so this research was done even prior to the um, emergence of SARS-CoV-2, what they noticed was a very important principle. If you had an early interferon response, you would not get severe disease. If you had no interferon response, you would not get severe disease. But if you had a delayed and strong interferon response, that was the critical step to predispose you to severe disease. And this is why people who had younger people, well, who had interferon autoantibodies, would have had a higher risk of getting severe disease. Now, without that understanding, nothing can make sense about it because in order for you to get that response, the virus had to be novel. Your body not been exposed to it before. And so people who had any kind of immune system response that could predict that this was a coronavirus wouldn't have had severe disease. That's why if they were exposed to another coronavirus recently or even a, a rhinovirus, they could have been protected. But it needed to be new and it needed to evade interferon. Now, this is really, really a crux of the point. And I'm going to try and take you through a really, hopefully simple concept that will help you to understand this concept about interferon and why it's important. So what I've got here is the White House. The White House is one of those very protected institutions and we remember it now, today is the 4th of July, Independence Day in the US. So it's a significant place, not just for the US, but for the world. The president lives there and it is protected, exceptionally well protected. What's very interesting is that not only is the White House protected in that sense, but there is a part of the White House that I think is called the bunker. And I've got this article from The Sun, just so I can give them some credit for it. But really what I wanted was the image when they were talking about uh, Donald Trump going in the bunker. So I'll, this is why I wanted to, to credit that point. And I'll show you the image here because I want you to see the important piece about interferon. 
So you just have to understand that in the same way that the White House is protected, your body similarly is protected. It has lots of layers. It has the gates and the guards at the front. And this is what the bunker would look like in the White House. It says it is five stories below the ground. It has these huge vault-like doors, has a secret lift, it's nuclear bomb-proofed, and it even has biometric access. And then it has this staircase that I guess you can't access very easily. What I've done is I've put a burglar inside the bunker. Now, if a burglar got inside the White House bunker, it would trigger a response all the way up to the very senior army response. You would see the National Guard at the White House because of one person getting through the security of the White House to actually physically be in the bunker. That's the very similar thing to what happens in severe COVID-19. A virus should never hit the lungs without a warning. And so therefore, when we have the virus evading all of the immune responses, which is what SARS-CoV-2 is about, it hits the lungs. That's what we call a delayed interferon response. So that is a very strong delayed response, which then causes a dysregulated immune response in some people, not in everybody, but it causes quite significant inflammation. That's the principle about what happens with severe COVID-19. The reality is that we can't have severe COVID-19 again because everybody has been exposed to the virus or they've been vaccinated. So they either have natural immunity or hybrid immunity. And so that risk across the population would be very, very low. And it could only be somebody who even after being exposed had interferon autoantibodies and then could still have a delayed interferon response. But that's really a small percentage of the population. And so we will not see the typical characteristic of severe COVID-19 again. Very important point. That leads me back to why COVID is now different. And I'm going to take you to another image that I have been trying to put together just to try and get these ideas across. Because how can it be different? It's the same virus, you may say. Well, just think about this for a second. I'm going to show you this slide here. Same virus, different disease. On the left here is a child, say with chickenpox. This is what it looks like. It tends to be relatively mild, a bit itchy. But here is an adult who's got herpes zoster. Same virus, completely different presentation of disease. So we have a template where a viral infection, the body's immune response to it can be different and you can have a different manifestation of the disease from exactly the same virus. That's what I mean when I speak about storm. Spike triggered autoimmune response to the virus is going to present in a completely different way. So let me just prepare you for what is happening on the ground. I've got here, this is from GB News, and I'll put it on full screen. This is the election thing, so you can know that in the UK, this is the top virologist warns the new COVID variant is hitting dangerous sweet spot as UK hospitalizations soar. The, the date on this here is the 3rd of July, 2024, just one day ago. And this warning came because hospital admissions rose by 24% in a single week in June. Additionally, what they're looking at is that the KP3 strain, right? So it says here, KP3 has a growth advantage over its ancestors. 
and the hospital admissions rose by 24% in the week ending in June 16th, climbing to 3.31 per 100,000 from 2.67 in the previous week. Not only that, it's that there was a 29% surge in positive cases in the week of June 22nd. This is very, very relevant. But everyone is saying, well, it's mild disease. That's because they don't understand fully what is going on. Now, what you have to again realize is that we have here that there are some characteristics about this virus. And I have here a preprint, and this is not yet fully peer reviewed, but it's looking at the virological characteristics of SARS CoV 2, KP3, LB1, and the KP2.3 variant. Uh, this has come from Japan, and they were comparing it to JN1. So this has only recently been posted in the last month, 9th of June, 2024. And what I want to take you to is the fact that this variant or this new set of variants are starting to rise across the world. So from the same paper, this is the image that they have got here. And um, I'll try and see if I can make this a little bit bigger. So you have here, this is showing Canada, United Kingdom, and what they're comparing is that they are comparing the infectivity, the relative, uh, the relative ease of spread compared to JN1. So they consider JN1, the variant that was the almost the grandfather of these variants, they put it at one. The BA2.861 uh, is less contagious. KP2, which has recently spread, is much more contagious, as well as KP3. And there is now LB1 and KP2.3. These are now spreading. And when we look at where they're spreading here, you can see when we look at Canada, the United Kingdom, and the USA, you can see that what's happening here is JN1 is coming down. What's rising here is KP3, which is rising and starting to fall already. This is in Canada. And here, rising up, is LB1. LB1 is rising across the board in the USA. United Kingdom, and Canada. So as I said, in highly vaccinated regions, we are seeing continuous spread and rising numbers of variants. What does it mean when the virus breaks through the mucosal immune barrier, gets into the bloodstream? What disease will it present with? because it will no longer be severe lung disease, as we expect. I mean, some cases will be a viral pneumonia with secondary bacterial infection. But we're going to see far more complex disease than that. And that's where I'm going to be trying to delineate. It's, this is what STORM is about. Spike-triggered autoimmune response mechanism, where we have these reinfections triggering autoimmune responses, how is it going to present heart, kidneys, brain, lungs? That is the fundamental thought that I'm after in terms of understanding and delineating where we are. This is going to be the first time you've seen this acronym. Some people may not agree with it. That's fine. I want them to take it apart and say why this is not going to happen. But I'm telling you that if you understand the characteristics, of what happened in the context of the first phase of COVID-19, that autoimmune response, that cytokine storm, which can only be described as an autoimmune response when we see all the autoantibodies and all the autoimmune characteristics coming from it. What happens when ongoing infection triggers that kind of response again? That's what I'm trying to delineate. I'm trying to get ahead of the curve. It's not just about waiting and seeing what happens next. No, let's understand the science. Let's look at what it means. Let's try and anticipate what's going on 
And critically, let's try and protect those who are willing to listen. Join me at the webinar. The link is below. This is a journey and exploration. This is something that I think is very complex, but I'll take the first step, stepping out there and saying, this is what it is. Need the scientific community to pick it up, challenge it, analyze it, understand it. Have a great evening.